I just want to look at an alternative way of doing integration by parts. I actually first saw this method in a movie, would you believe? The, the teacher in this movie was doing integration by parts and going tic-tac-toe, tic-tac, what the heck? What's this tic-tac-toe? This is tic-tac-toe. It's probably got another name, but anyway. So the idea is this, you have to integrate u to v. One of those things we know we have to differentiate, one of those things we have to integrate. So we write it down, u to v, differentiate, integrate. Okay? Then you do exactly what the column's saying. Well, if I integrate to v, I get v. And there's the tic-tac-toe. Tic-tac-toe. <laughs> That's what he was saying. Tic-tac-toe. So on the board he was going tic-tac-toe. Well, what the heck? So tic-tac-toe goes to the positive. So you write down u times v. And then you go again. Differentiate the u. You get the u dx. Integrate the v. You get whatever the integral of the v dx is. Tic-tac-toe. But see how the signs alternate? There you go. Minus the integral of v to u. And there's the formula. Okay, so just as before, you choose u so that differentiation makes it easier and you choose to v something that you can integrate. So let's have a look at the different cases and how it works. There's that x cos x one. You remember the repeated one that kept going. So we set it up, x cos x. Now in your differentiation column, you just keep going down until you hit zero. So x1, 0. And then in the other one, because this is the one where you're getting that repeating thing, I just keep going sine x minus cos x. And then tic-tac-toe. x sine x, tic-tac-toe. Minus minus cos x. There's my answer. Done. x squared e dx. Differentiated column. Keep going down until I hit 0. Then in the other column, I just integrate which is a very boring column, everything's e to the x. Tic-tac-toe, tic-tac-toe, tic-tac-toe. There's the answer. Well, what happens if you're multiplying it by something that actually doesn't integrate? In that case, you stop when the product of the line, so when you read across the line, that that product, you can integrate. That's when you stop. So log x. So log x, and obviously the other function becomes 1. Differentiate log x, I get 1 on x. Integrate 1, I get x. Well, hang on. Multiply that together, I've got something I can integrate. So tic-tac-toe, x log x, but then it becomes minus, but I can't do a tic-tac-toe, so I just say, well, the integral of that line that I stopped at. So it's integral of 1 dx, x log x minus x. There's the answer. So inverse tan of x. Differentiate inverse tan, I get 1 on 1 plus x. Integrate 1, I get x. Oh, okay. x divided by 1 plus x squared. I can integrate that because that's derivative times function. So I'll stop there. Tic-tac-toe minus the integral of that line. And there's an integral I can easily handle. So I get minus a half log 1 plus x squared. x cubed log x. Differentiate. Um, well, actually, yes, I can integrate that line. That's quite easy. So... Tic-tac-toe minus the integral, well, minus a quarter, the integral of x cubed. There you go. There's the answer. Of course, another way I could have done it, if for some reason I wanted to swap those around, I suppose I could have done it this way, because we do know how to integrate log x. It's x log x minus x. I could do it that way. Hmm. But I'll stop there because I end up with a multiple of what I started with. Because if you multiply these together, look what happens. I get 3x cubed, which is a multiple of what I was doing. And the other bit, I can integrate. Not a problem. Tic-tac-toe. But then I have minus 3, so I'll move that to the other side. I'll do the simple integral that I've got there. Then divide everything by 4. And there's the same answer. Well, what happens when you've got two integratable functions? So again, you will stop when the product of the line is integratable or a multiple of another line. So just like the one before. E to the x cos x. So I'm going to go this way around. Still can't do that one, but tic-tac-toe, I'll do the first bit. Let's go again. E to the x minus cos x. Oh, I've got a multiple of what I had, so that's good. So I'll go minus, minus becomes plus, but then it'll now be plus the integral of that line, which is minus, so I've got minus e to the x cos x. I can move that to the other side and have the answer. So some other ones. x e to the x, somehow the dx has ended up in the power. It's not meant to be in the power. Okay, x e to the x. So x to, oh, I'll go that down till it gets to zero. The other one's e to the x, so 
tic-tac-toe, tic-tac-toe. There's my answer. Inverse sine, differentiate inverse sine. Oh, ooh, I've got a line which is now integratable, tic-tac-toe, but then it'll be minus that row. Bingo, got the answer. So there's this one and x. Oh yeah, because that will now multiply together. The x's will cancel and I've got an inverse sign, haven't I? So tic-tac-toe, imagine that just appeared. Ooh, there we go. Minus that line. And that's an inverse sign. Now here's another idea. People have asked me, can you use complex numbers with integration? Yeah, of course you can. It's just a number. So look at this. Remember? the formula. E to the i out of theta is cos theta plus i sine theta. So you could use this to do some interesting trig integrals. Here's one that came from the 2020 extension 2 paper. First of all, oh actually I don't think this was an integration question but I'll show you how we use this for integration later. This was the question in the HSC they asked that year. Show this relationship, you know our standard relationship but they've written it in uh, exponential form rather than saying z plus 1 on z. Okay. Well, e to the i n theta plus e to the minus i n theta becomes that. We then make a note that, hang on a sec, cos is an even function, sine's an odd function, therefore these things happen. Uh, there it is, 2 cos n theta. Comes out very nicely. They then said, by expanding this, show this trig relationship. Now, uh, we've got to remember, I guess, our binomial theorem to do the expansion, but when we do, there we have it. If we group the coefficients that are the same together, we can now see, we can apply the formula again that we had. So there it is, e to the 4i but plus e to the minus 4i, and there's e to the 2i plus e to the minus 2i. So I now know I can sub in cos 4 theta, or 2 cos 4 theta rather, for the first one, and 2 cos 2 theta for the second one. That'll be 2 cos theta to the power of 4. Divide everything by 16, we have our relationship. Hence or otherwise, so this is where the trig integral came in. So hence or otherwise, find the integral of cos to the power of 4. So we have sort of used complex numbers to do this trig integral because we derived the relationship using the complex numbers. But now we know it's that. All right, use of double angles. So basic trig integrals, subbing in, and there's the answer, 3 pi and 16. Back to this one, where you would think, let's go and use integration by parts, and that's the way most people would go and do it. But if we take advantage, we could say, well, no, actually what I'm looking at is the real part of this expression. I'm just looking at the real part of that. Okay, but that is e to the x times e to the ix. I just want the real part of this expression. And then I just use index laws, and it's just a simple integral to do. 1 plus i is just a number. So I can integrate that, and I get 1 on 1 plus i e to the 1 plus i x. But just the real part of that I want. So let's break it up into the real and imaginary. Um, well, the reciprocal of this is 1 minus i on 2. Well, 2 is a real number, so I can pull that out. I can't pull the 1 minus out, i out yet, because that's not real. I can only pull out real numbers. So let's see what is 1 minus i times e to the 1 plus ix. Well, what is e to the 1 plus ix? It's 1 minus i times the cos of x plus i sine of x because e to the x is a real number. I can pull that out. So really, I'm just saying 1 minus i times e to the ix, which is cos x plus i sine x. Now, let's expand that expression out and we just want the real part of the expansion, and there's the answer. Certainly not the way they would be expecting you to do it. Certainly a valid way of doing it.